Hey everyone, it's Fox from Modelmaking.guru here, back with part three of our build of the Master Grade Freedom Gundam. Um, I was going to skip over a lot of this bit uh, and just not show you the painting. In the last episode, you recall, I painted the white armour. Um, but I'm going to do a couple of things different, and I thought I'd show you. First and foremost, uh, I'm going to be changing the colour scheme of the model. Here's what the model should look like when it's finished. This isn't my build, this is just some random picture I picked off the Googles. So credit to whoever built this model, it looks really good. Okay, that's what it should look like. And I've been toying with the colour scheme and here's what I'm thinking about. Now this is just a really crappy quick Photoshop colour swap, so it looks crap. Uh, but it's just to give me an idea of how colours go together. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. Now, of course, I may not go for those colours anyway. I'm just thinking of replacing the blues with the reds, uh, the dark greys with some slightly lighter greys, or maybe a blue. Uh, the reds with... I've forgotten what's on the picture, but you, you got the idea. It's basically colour swaps. Um, I always think the blue looks a bit toy-like, and I wanted to give the wings some more interesting colour. I'm thinking of like dark reds, not just bright red, but darker reds, and maybe some funky airbrush work on the wings, but we'll we'll figure that out. Um, so I might show you a bit of the painting of the bodywork for that. Um, and also, I'm going to paint the inner frame. Now, it's the first time... Well, it's not the first time I've painted an inner frame, but it's the first time I'm going to have painted it metallic colours, um, so that I have a shiny inside frame. My plan is to actually paint the frame gunmetal. Tamir XF, sorry, X10 gunmetal. Uh, what I'm going to do is paint the inner frame, get it all built. I'll add some extra accent colours to the frame, sort of silvers and golds and things like that, just to make it more interesting so it's not just all one colour. It will be left gloss and shiny, so it'll be gloss varnished. But then I will be doing weathering on top. Don't worry, this isn't going to be a, an, an unweathered build. Uh, but I thought it's kind of cool to put a nice shiny frame in there and then weather it up. So it's still shiny but covered in crap, basically. So I have all the inner frame parts ready. This is a small chunk of them. There's loads more uh, for the legs. And I haven't yet... Uh, primed the arms, so I've not done all the inner frame yet, but I thought I'd show you this um, So I'm going to crack on and so say I'm going to be using Tamiya's X10. Now there's a specific way I have to do this I'm still using my crappy spray craft airbrush from last time because I haven't got new needle for my Deville bis yet um, I found that with my airbrushes the X10 because it's a flaked metallic color um, Is it does tend to gunk up the airbrush a bit so what I tend to do and to try and get the best results and as little fleck in the metal as possible um, is just use it really really thin so only a few drops of the paint in say two-thirds or half a cup of thinner now it is a big risk doing it on these ABS parts because the thinners in acrylic paints can easily eat through the plastic so you can see these have all been primed carefully and hopefully I've got all the little areas covered the thinners in paints hot thinners um, tend to eat away at this plastic and can make it crack or crumble so especially on joints and connection points you have to be really super careful um, so I'm going to use a really thin mix, uh, and I'm going to be airbrushing it on lightly. So without further ado, I shall go and get that mixed up, and we'll start spraying. Okay, right, so let's do some gunmetal spraying. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to basically use the gunmetal to give this piece, which is, as you can see, just primer colour, if that's in focus, uh, a metallic appearance. Now you can use things like Alclad paints, which are actually metallic paints designed to be, the, you know, they are kind of absolutely the best way of making metallic textures. However, they are lacquer based and uh, unless you're very, very careful, they rip your lungs out and they're nasty things to use. So you've got to wear a mask, you've got to have really good ventilation. I haven't got all that and I really can't be fussed um, doing all that. So as I said, I'm going to be using Tamiya's X10 Gunmetal. Um, now I'm recording this after I sprayed all the other parts because the first bit I painted uh, I did a little introduction and I can't remember what I said now what I said in the last section so apologies if I repeat uh, the trick with this paint is don't just spray it on neat from the bottle uh, it's flaky it's got flakes in it uh, and generally with metallic paints if you do it neat unless you've got a really wide nozzle on your airbrush you're just going to gunk your airbrush up or even gunk it up even so I tend to use mostly thinner uh, with a few drops of the colour in there. Now your mileage will vary, you'll have to tweak it a bit. Using this paint is kind of instinctive, there's not a lot I can say for sure as how to use it. I tend to put say half a cup of thinner in, 
put you know five six seven drops of the paint in not too much stir it around with the brush this is in the mixing cup on the airbrush give it a quick blast if it just goes bleh, when you spray it like a splotch mark it's too thin uh, and obviously start with the air and pull the trigger back to get the paint uh, but if you're getting splotch marks it's too thin add a little tiny bit more until you're able to do a light mist coat and the trick is to do a mist coat first just to cover it and then build up that mist coat just to darken the colour ideally I want it to look metallic not super flaky um, if it's really flaky it'll look out of scale and terrible I want it to look like actual metal parts or as close as I can without using actual metal paint um, so I'm going to do that now as I say it's kind of instinctive so you'll feel with the paint as you go on occasionally it will kind of splurge a bit and you'll get little blob marks but it is very nicely self leveling so if you do don't worry the blast from the airbrush actually helps it dry anyway as you're spraying so just go gently uh, and hopefully you'll get a good result so let's get this going I'll get the uh, fans and things going and we'll crack on yeah. just check me focus make sure you can see all the chisel okay so airbrush ready We've got our gun metal mix in there let's get this going so I'm going to do a light coat first really not much pull back on the trigger at all just to give it a coating don't know if you can see this can I yeah you should be able to see that hopefully I've got a you know my usual battle to make sure you can see what I'm doing I'm not getting too close I've got the the paint flow nozzle away to the right but not all the way and don't worry if it looks like nothing's going on you want to go slow and steady anyway I'm going inside because I think this bit might be visible and remember always start with the air first and then pull back for the paint Okay, so I've got my light coat on there. It doesn't look major, but you can see it's got a bit of a shine to it. And it's changed the colour a little bit. It's going to be kind of like a graphite effect. So now I'm going to go over with a bit more. This is one of those rare paints where you want to keep the airbrush moving. Don't go slowly. Because if you go too much in one spot, it'll just look a lot darker than the rest. And it'll kill the effect. Now I've done that bit, I can just use air, just air on its own. So I'm pushing the trigger down, not pulling it back, just to give it a quick blast. It'll just crust the surface a little tiny bit, make the next coat easier, because I don't want ripples. One more coat. If it does start to spider leg out or go all splotchy, don't worry. It will kind of even itself out anyway. This colour is quite forgiving. As long as you're not blasting on at full speed. So I am varying the pullback on the trigger a bit. Just to get a bit more or a bit less. I know the kind of colour I want. So that's what I'm aiming for. And there, I think we are done. So, I'll just give that a blast of air. Discombobulate the blowy device so you can hear me. And that, if I can get it to focus, as always, the battle with the camera. I say camera, I mean iPhone. Let me get my thing so I can see if you're in focus. Where are we? Where's my... There we go. So that is what we're looking for. That's a nice smooth finish. Now if you've tried spraying other Tamir Metallics, um, like if you've followed uh, Tony Fairclough and his lovely C3PO build, you'll know he sprayed uh, the Gold Leaf, which is another Tamir Metallic. Uh, a couple of things to know about metallics are 
Um, they take a long time to be finger dry and stuck to the surface. Uh, can take a few days and even after a few days you can get some transfer of paint from the surface to your finger. So really ideally leave this for at least one or two days and then matte var uh, gloss varnish it to keep the paint in. If you're going to be handling the part gloss varnish it by all by all accounts you should well, not by all accounts for the love of god you should do that otherwise you will find it coming off and then you transfer it to other parts um but yeah the, the only other thing with the to me metal metallic paints put my teeth in um, is they can be sometimes a bit flaky and i found the best way to try and minimize that is using them really thin don't use them neat um control how don't go full on with your paint you just use little bits and build it up. Uh, this is quite a forgiving colour so it doesn't come out massively flaky. If you painted this on with a brush it would be really dark, almost black and have lots of silver flecks in it. It's a completely different colour if you brush paint it. So if I get any paint that I need to touch up I don't really want to touch it with the brush because it was such a different colour. Um, but it comes out marvellous. It's, no, it's not in the alclad range of metallic paints but it looks good. Uh, it'll do for me. Now it is going to be weathered, I'm going to be doing gunk washes and things. No paint chipping, just gunk washes and I will be doing highlighting the edges with some of the metallic paints. And the parts of the legs I will be painting all the coloured, metallic colour details on there but I'll be brush painting those. Um, so that's that done. I've actually done the rest of the metallic inner frame parts. So I'll go and let all these dry for a bit and get them gloss varnished. Uh, when we come back I don't know if I need to show you painting the red and other colour parts because you've seen me paint the white parts, it's exactly the same principle. Um, so when we come back we should have a um, big chunk of all the parts painted. I've not done some of the weapons but at least for the mobile suit we should have a big chunk of them done. So without further ado, what I shall now say is back in a moment. Okay, right, I was going to skip this, but then I thought again. Um, if I'm doing this video like most of my videos for people who are learning, uh, never done this before, and maybe wanting to follow along, I should really film everything. A, to show how much work goes into, you know, this kind of project, and B, just so you don't miss out on any steps. So I don't want any confusion, so I'm going to film this bit. Uh, what's next? Well, I've now got all the blue parts of the kit. Not all of them, because as I said, I've not done the weapons or some stuff yet. Um, but I've got the wings and the little verniers for the shoulders. And also the feet. Uh, these are all the blue parts. Uh, I am actually going to do them that funny shade of red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Tamiya Flat Red XF7. I'm going to mix in another colour. Now I haven't decided yet. Whether I'm going to mix in something like, uh, oh, that's not the right colour, what we're going to mix in. Let's have a look. As you know, I never plan these things. I make them up as I go along. Uh, what colour was that I just held up then? Yeah, I might mix in some uh, XF64 red brown. Or I might mix in some blue. Uh, some uh, flat blue. Just to give it more. Now, I'm trying to remember my colour wheel here. I think blue and red makes purple. Yeah, I'm showing how stupid I really am. Um, so I'm going to mix a couple of colours together. Uh, I'm going to do it, but I've not got a massive plan, as you as you remember, uh, the picture I showed you at the start of what I wanted this to look like. Maybe. Here it is again. And as I said, it's only a really rough idea. Uh, I don't just want red, because red's... Gundams are always primary colours for a lot of the time, so I want to get away from that. So I'll, I'll probably just mix these and see what happens. Um, what I'm going to do first though is get my old standby of Tamiya Rubber Black XF63. Nope, that's Jim and Grey, you spoon. Do you know, one day I'll actually plan all this and organise it properly and then I'll just shock myself or something. Tamiya Rubber Black XF85. I won't be the only one in shock. Um, just to do the panel lining. Sorry, pre-shading. 
just to go around all the panel lines and edges just to darken them as you saw me do in the second video so I'm going to do that now then when we come back I'll hopefully have mixed a colour and we'll get these painted so let's get on with the pre-shading Okay, right, pre-shading's all done. Everything's been nicely uh, pre-shaded. All the wing parts and all the bits. Remember, these are all the bits that would be blue. Now they're gonna be, well, a red color. Um, I've been mixing some colors to see what happens. Uh, now these probably won't come out properly on camera, but hey. Um, started with adding some brown to red, and it made a kind of poop color that one there which is not really what I'm looking for I did some blue to red and it made this dark blue grey again not what I'm looking for I then added uh, well, I can't remember what this one was now something uh, I can't remember what I added to that it may have been a little tiny bit of yellow I think or uh, German grey still not what I'm looking for but then I mixed some German grey in this one and it's sort of the colour I'm looking for. This was German grey as well, but it wasn't quite the right shade and I got the mixture wrong. This one is more sort of what I'm looking for, if a little dark. So I'm going to try and mix this. Now I'm going to use really, really high-tech, complicated way of doing this. Basically going to pour paint from one pot to the other. So, get myself a little tooth and pick and gefarten. If you're wondering why I wear one glove, by the way, um, it's because the airbrush hose is quite pulls is quite tight and pulls the airbrush back and my hand gets really tired. Also, these gloves are a little bit too small, so it just makes my hand really tired. So as this one's just holding the airbrush, I don't need to worry about having a glove. Uh, right, so we've got our Tamiya XF7 flat red. I'm going to use Hardcore Science now. So it's a nice bright red colour, but it's a bit too bright for me. I don't want it to be bright primary red. So I'm going to simply, you know what? I might actually sacrifice a pipette for this. Let me see if I can find one. Got to find one first. By find, I mean, remember where the hell there we go. Where the hell I put them. So let's try some German grey. Das ist richtig. Okay, so I'll try a few drops. So, one, two, three, four, five. It's not quite a full pot of flat red. I probably won't need this much anyway. Give this a little stirrage. See what happens. Probably not too much because I need to put a little tiny bit in. So I don't know if you can see. It's not really changed the colour much at all, which is fine. I don't want to suddenly put loads in and go, oh, it's too dark. Try a few more drops, if I have any left. Two, three, four, five, seven, eight. Little drops of paint going in. Give this a try now, see what happens. And now we start to see the color changing ever so slightly more towards what I am looking for. Das ist richtig! Right, so I don't know if you've noticed the difference here. Probably won't come out on camera. Let me give it a good old-fashioned shaking. And bear in mind as well, it probably will come out darker than the paint itself because I'm gonna because of the pre-shading, and then when I do lots of gunk washes and stuff afterwards, it will come out even darker still. So I think this is kind of the colour I'm looking for. A dark muted red. Not bright, with a hint of the German grey is shifted towards the blue. It's a blue grey more than anything else. Um, so it's slightly warm, it's slightly cold, and this has shifted this a little bit bluer, but it also has a, like a hint of orangey to it. So I think that, that will do us nicely. 
I've just thrown my cocktail stick covered in paint into my trash bag and missed completely and now I've got paint all over my hands. Let me just get that off. So that's the colour I'm going to use. The downside of this is if I use all this paint it's a one shot deal. I can't reproduce it so just have to hope I get this right the first time. I'll throw that pipette away now, it's no use to me. I could clean it out, but yeah, I'm lazy. So, right, so that's the paint done. If you have our little colour here, das ist richtig. Okay, so let's get this going. So, I'll zoom out so you can see all the things. If I can get the camera to work, that's zooming in, you idiot. Always with the wrong direction. No, I said wrong direction. Wrong direction, not... Never mind. Wow, I did a bit of Tony then, didn't I? Rrr, I am Tony Fagloff. Not really. Tony does it far better than me. Tony has come... If you've never watched Tony Fagloff's videos, go and watch them. His C-3PO um, and his Stormtrooper and his droids. Oh, I love his style. He just kind of talks to witters away to himself in a really nice way. It's really pleasing. Love you, Tony. You're a top dude. Uh, you make kick-ass models. Oh, uh, um, and also, uh, along the tradition of Tony's videos, I should also give a shout out to Johnny Culling, who um, follows Tony and I and my videos, uh, and has been learning the ropes, as it were, and via some amazingness, is producing models, I'd say, if not as good as ours, better than ours, which is pretty cool, from, from nothing to making kick-ass models. So, nice one, Johnny. And that goes to everybody, anybody who follows me, uh, who's a you know a newbie and never done this before. The reason I do these videos is to try and show people how to do it, so it's not quite as complicated and scary as you think. The the things you can learn to do this, you know, aren't as terrifying as you might think without knowing. So um, I like to try and show people anyone can do this. This is stuff anybody can do, as long as you have the right equipment and know what to do with it, or at least have been shown what to do with it, you're good to go. And that's the way I think. Anybody can do this. This is why I do this. I don't do this for the views or for the money or for the... I mean, I make the models for the fun, but the reason I do all this is just because I like to, you know, show people how they can do this. I also like to show people what I'm doing, so I'll see if I can zoom out anymore. No, that's... Oh, do you know? Right. So, yeah, I don't do this for... I mean, there's no money in this. Don't get me wrong. Some people ask me, you know, what's money like when you're model making? Well, I do this, well, I've said it, you know, I do it for fun, but the whole guru thing is, uh, I mean, you'll, if you watch my videos, you know there are adverts on there, so you know the, ad, the videos are monetized. But hey, if YouTube offer that, I'm not going to say no. But, um, you know, I don't do this for a living. I do do commissions, and I take money for commissions, uh, and they're good. But I couldn't buy a house on it, I couldn't buy a car on it, I couldn't live off it. Not yet, anyway. I fully intend to live forever and obviously become very rich. So, we've put the thinner in the airbrush. Always put the thinner in first. I keep forgetting to tell you this. Always put the thinner in first. The thinner will then go into the into the tubes. There you go, Tony. Into the tubes. Um, and then when the paint goes in, we'll mix it in. When you first turn it on, there'll be a little bit thinner and then the paint will start to flow out. If you put the paint in first, that goes into the tubes. And, you know, you, it just doesn't work. The thinner then can't get into the paint and it blocks the tubes up. So you end up with like a deposit of paint. So I'm going to put a few drops of the paint in there. I'm being really careful how much I put in because I don't want to run out. Because if I run out of this colour now, I'm a bit screwed. I'd have to start from scratch and go all over and start again. So I need my scruffy mixing brush. Scruffy brush, scruffy brush. Give it a good stirage. It kind of looks like a Bloody Mary, actually. Just without the Worcestershire sauce. Wor Worcestershire. Wor Worcestershire. Oh, for any of my American viewers, Worcestershire sauce. Although we might say Worcester sauce. It's Worcestershire. Not Worcestershire. In fact, yeah. Little 101 from my colonial viewers. When we, when we have S-H-I-R-E on the end of a place name, it's not Shire. Well, most times it's not Shire. It's just Shire. Worcestershire, Staffordshire, I can't think of another shire, but yeah, hey. The bizarreness of uh, British English. See, I'm teaching you a lot of things today. Right, so, 
Paint's mixed in, giving it a good scribble with the brush. I will move that out of the way. I will try not to knock things over. Uh, right, let's get this show on Das Road. So let's get this bit painted. Got my colour, my spanky colour in the airbrush ready for you. Turn this compressor up. Okay, make sure it's flowing. Now for some reason this colour, I've tried a couple of pieces before I did this bit. It's coming out a bit thin, so it may take a little longer than normal. But here's the piece we're looking at. Let's get this red, shall we? Let's start off always with air first, then pull back for the paint and start with a light mist coat. Oh, spray booth, hang on. Forgot me big sucky fan. Make sure you can see all this, be handy, wouldn't it? So I'm not going too heavy, just a light coat to start with. Now I noticed before I put lots of pre-shading inside the piece, but that's because I want it to look dirty and used. Got my little misty coat on. Now I can go back over with a bit more. Just give it a bit of air first just to dry it a little bit. And then go for the next coat. It'll take a little while for the pre-shading to be blended in. I'm not aiming to disappear it completely. I just want to make it fade. Because it's thinned, it will splurge out every now and then, but if you get a little splurgy blob, just hit it with some air only. And if you look it, it will just dry it quickly, and you'll be sweet. Little circles of paint in the middle of panels. Going over and over just till I get the basic deepness that I want. Now I have done a couple of panels already and they are being really finicky. This paint is being really finicky so I may end up with some variation in the different colours of different parts but I can live with that. I don't aim for perfection, I aim for looking cool. How's that compared to the bits I've done? Pretty good. And that... Let me just turn this off. That is pretty much what I'm going for. Not a bright red, deep red, and the pre-shading's still there and still visible. And there's a wet patch there, but I'll try shortly. Uh, pre-shading's still there, just darkening it. I will be adding paint chipping and all that stuff, so it's going to make it look a lot more funky. It always looks a bit. Whenever you do this, you pre-shade and do a first paint coat. Don't worry if it suddenly looks like like ass. It often can do. It's like uh, if you do an ink drawing and then colour it with watercolours before you've finished it, it will always about halfway through look like ass until you put the outlining on a drawing, then it looks brilliant. Same with models. Sometimes the initial paint coat can just look rubbish, but when you start putting weathering and other things in, it can suddenly increase the volume of the kick ass. So I'll go and do the rest of the pieces I haven't done yet. Um, 
and when we come back we'll have a look I think we might just end it at that today because uh, for some reason the airbrush is really cramping my hand I'm getting really quite uncomfortable with the airbrush here so uh, let me go and finish these so we'll go into the time lapse Woo! I don't know what that means I don't know why I did that bye Okay, we are done. That is everything now blue, painted red, uh, that I can think of, save for one or two bits. Um, had a nightmare with the paint. I think it was either too thin or somehow mixing German grey and red made a super transparent colour. Uh, but it took a long time to build the colour up. Uh, I really struggled to cover up the pre-shading lines and I think even now looking at them, they're a bit darker than I'd anticipated. They're still kind of visible. Um, but having said that, I'm kind of happy with it. It's a really dark look. Um, the colours don't really come out on camera, so I'll take on the film, so I'll take a photograph. Uh, but yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. I know the pre shedding lines are still quite hard and visible, but I'm going to be doing paint chipping and other oil paint weathering and stuff that will hopefully blend it in even more, I hope. So fingers crossed for that one. Uh, it'll, other than it being a real pig to work with, it came out. Okay, there is one particular thing I'm really pleased with, and I don't know how I did it. Uh, these verniers, and I'll zoom in in a second. My plan was, uh, paint them red. The grill on the inside will be a dark grey colour. I'd have to go back and brush paint that in really carefully later on. Probably make a mess of it. However, by some miracle with the airbrush, I was able to get the airbrush on the inside wall and just bring the spray down so I could see where it was colouring it. And as soon as it got to the grill, just pull back. And somehow I managed to spray the inside wall without actually getting any paint on the grill inside, which remains the pre-shade colour, which is rubber black. I'll just see if I can zoom in. Uh, let me give that a go. I'll zoom in on my hand first. I tried this a minute ago and it was just worse than death. So, I don't know if it will cope. So there's the outside, all painted red. There's the inside grill, all rubber black. And if you look, you can see the walls are red, but I haven't painted the grill. It's not matching exactly in every spot, but not that you'd ever spot it. It's going to be weathered inside there anyway. So basically, I was able to airbrush the red part without even touching the grill inside, so I don't need to paint that now. How cool is that? I don't even know how I did that. I, just, I don't know. Something amazing happened. My camera also moved. Sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know how I did that, but and I'll probably never be able to do it again. So anyway, that's all cool. So uh, it's been a long day of painting. I am really absolutely knackered, so I might call it quits there. Uh, when we come back, ooh, what have we got next? Still got some armor parts to paint, to pre-shade and paint. So we'll go through those. Uh, when those are done, um, we can start on some of the paint chipping. Uh, and then decals and then once that's done we can start building stuff and start doing some weathering so uh, that will do for today thank you very much for watching as always leave a comment on YouTube on Facebook Twitter uh, go along to the website all the addresses at the end uh, but thank you very much for watching as always only a short episode this time he says not knowing actually how long the episode is um, and until next time uh, just two things to say tube spoon and also adios amoebas